Most video games will give you an indicator of what happens when you change the difficulty. In Total War Warhammer 2, almost all of these changes are hidden from the player. In this video, I'll help you understand what changes between each difficulty and what impact it may have on your campaign. Please do remember that some of these things could have changed since I made this video and when you're watching it. If something changes, I'll try and remember to update the description. Nonetheless, let's get into it. First of all, as you probably know, you can choose between easy, normal, hard, very hard and legendary for the campaign difficulty. For the battle difficulty, you can choose between easy, normal, hard and very hard. Let it be known that there are a ton of things that get affected, but I have elected to only mention and show the ones I feel are a major. If you want to get every single little stat change, you can go to the Total War Warhammer Stats website. They have a lot of infographics and a lot of knowledge about the different things. Let's start off by looking at campaign difficulty changes. First up are changes that affect the AI. These numbers go from easy to legendary, so the first number you see will be from the easy, Difficulty, then Normal, Hard, Very Hard, and finally Legendary. The major things that get affected are Growth, Attrition Damage, Local Recruitment Capacity, Global Recruitment Capacity, Recruitment Cost, Construction Cost, Upkeep Cost, and Casualty Replenishment Rate. So, now we know what changes, but by how much and how does it impact your campaign? For starters, the AI gets a bonus to Growth. The bonus goes from 20, 40, 60, 100, up to 125 depending on difficulty. Growth is a stat that determines when you can upgrade your settlements to a higher tier. As you can tell by numbers, the AI quickly builds up their cities on the harder difficulties. So if you're playing on hard and above, remember that rushing an enemy faction might just have you face a large garrison and a lot of walls. A bit less noticeable, but still impactful change, is the amount of casualties the AI takes from attrition. The AI takes minus 30%, minus 50%, minus 60%, minus 70%, all the way up to minus 80% less casualties from all forms of attrition, depending on a difficulty. This means that you shouldn't expect an AI army to just kill itself by standing in your vampire or chaos corruption. On top of not taking as much damage from attrition, the AI armies also heal faster. They get plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 7, plus 9% replenishment rate, depending on difficulty. This will mostly be noticeable when the AI is using the encampment stands outside of their own territory. Units don't replenish when they aren't in friendly areas, so they won't really get anything from this bonus when standing in your settlements. Not the biggest of changes, but it does mean that huge monsters comes back to full health a little bit faster. So if you're playing on higher difficulties, you might want to try and finish them off before the battle ends. Next up are changes to local recruitment, global recruitment, recruitment cost and upkeep for the AI. On easy and normal, the AI gets plus 2 to local recruitment and plus 3 on hard, very hard and legendary. Obviously, more recruitment means larger armies faster. So when you see an enemy lord recruiting, you have to keep in mind they can get a lot of units in just one turn of mustering compared to you. They also get a bonus to global recruitment, letting the AI recruit plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6, depending on a difficulty. While global recruitment is a lot more expensive and take more turns compared to normal recruitment, you have to keep in mind that even a small AI army outside of its own territory can quickly become a large threat if not dealt with before they get a chance to global recruit. Speaking of armies, the AI gets units a lot cheaper than you do. Specifically, they get 0%, 30%, 50%, 60%, 70% cost reduction to recruitment cost of units. So on hard and above, the AI pays half the amount of money to recruit units compared to you. This change isn't actually as big as a deal as you might think it is. Because while the AI could get a ton of monsters or late game units really cheap, it seems they have some predetermined army setups they like to run. Of course this change matters, but most of the time it simply helps the AI build their armies faster rather than stronger. So you shouldn't have to worry about facing an army with 19 Necrofex Colossus or Star Dragons, no matter which difficulty you play on. Now let's look at the last factor that affects the AI's army, which is upkeep reduction. There are no changes in upkeep for the AI compared to the player on easy and normal. However, starting on hard, the AI gets 10%, minus 15%, minus 20% upkeep for all units. I don't think I have much to say here, the AI pays less for their units, so they can afford to field more armies. One last change I didn't mention in the list of changes above is that the AI generates more ritual currency in the Vortex campaign depending on the difficulty. Essentially this boils down to the AI always starting the rituals faster than you can on hard and above.
However, if you ever played a Vortex campaign, you know this doesn't really matter since you can always stop them at the final battle. And that are all the changes for the AI, but what about the player? The list of major things affected depending on difficulty for the player are public order and upkeep. Yeah, yeah, there, there aren't a lot of things here. Public order in all of your own provinces are modified by plus one, zero, minus two, minus four, minus eight from easy to legendary. This one is very obvious. From easy to very hard, it doesn't really affect much. But on legendary, it might become hard to have a positive public order without the use of rights, commandments, or building that affect it. For upkeep, the only change is found at the easy and legendary difficulty. On normal, hard, and very hard, upkeep is not affected at all. On easy, you pay 10% less upkeep, while you pay 10% more upkeep on legendary. Not a huge change here either, but still something that will affect your economy on easy and legendary respectively. I should mention that there are some other hidden modifiers that not even Total War Warhammer Stats website can determine. These are things such as how much the AI targets other AI factions compared to the player, when the AI decides to declare war on you, and how quickly they confederate other factions. These will scale with difficulty, but there are no numbers or guidelines to it, so all I can advise you is try and play for yourself and see what happens. That brings us to the end of changes depending on campaign difficulty. Next we'll take a look at what changes in the battle difficulty. These are stat bonuses or penalties that are only active when playing a battle. Let me warn you now that these numbers might be inaccurate or totally outdated. Since Total War Warhammer stats does not have, well, stats on it, I went to different forums and found posts from different dates. The only solid data I can present is a post from a CA developer telling the bonuses and penalties to leadership. The rest are from players who worked out the numbers for themselves, so once again these might not be completely accurate or might even be outdated. Nonetheless, they are the only numbers I could find, so they are what I will use for this video. The stats affected by battle difficulty in combat are leadership, charge bonus, melee attack, melee damage, melee defense, and missile reload speed. For leadership changes, we can look at the post by the CA developer I mentioned earlier. As you can see, the player has plus 4, 0, minus 2, minus 4 leadership, and the AI has minus 4, 0, plus 4, plus 10, depending on the difficulty. Leadership obviously affects when your units route, so the harder difficulty, the easier it is for your units to route, and the harder it is for the enemy units to route. The next stat changes only affect the AI, so keep that in mind. Because I'm a little bit lazy and I don't need to explain what every one of these stats does, here is a picture of the stat changes the AI units has when in battle. These numbers are percentages, so 0.8 is 80% of their original value, 1.1 is 110% of the original value, and so on. I do want to mention that reload speed directly changes how fast missile units deal their damage, since faster reload means faster missiles. However, the ammunition amount does not change, so the total amount of damage they can deal is the same as your own missile units, but they can do it faster. For the other stat changes, it mostly matters when units of the same tier fight each other. Your Phoenix Guard will still destroy the skeletons no matter what difficulty you play on, but if your Phoenix Guard is fighting another Phoenix Guard, the AI will come out on top if no other buffs or debuffs are in play. Finally, you do have to keep in mind that while your Phoenix Guard will destroy the skeletons, they will deal more damage or last longer the higher difficulty you play on. So keep in mind when you're fighting that even if you have a slightly stronger army, the AI stat bonuses might be able to overcome that. And that is the end of this guide to difficulty in Total War Warhammer 2. I know this kind of video is kind of boring, but I felt there was a need for it. I know I was looking for a difficulty guide when I was first playing, so I hope it was helpful to some of you. If it was helpful, consider subscribing. That's all for now. Good luck on the battlefield, and I'll hopefully see you all very soon.